Oh. Anyway, my thing just told me I scheduled for 11.30 p.m. Do you want to uh -huh. go early? And I'm like, oh. But anyway, <laughs> we're here at the right time, and I told you the right time. So that's all that matters. Hello. Welcome. I'm Rachel Archelais. I'm here with the wonderful Carrie Roldan. Hey, guys. And we're doing it. We're doing a live stream. So Carrie and I are really into the idea of being unlimited. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you're watching us, comment along. We're here. If you have questions, let us know. And I know Carrie has a lot to say about this because as Intimate Alien says, she has bigger dreams than almost anyone she's ever met. And I, I too feel a sense of being unlimited, of like, I can have, do, or be anything my heart desires. But we also know it can be a little tricky to see that that's true in our lives. So we're just going to have an open conversation today about that and give you our best advice if you're looking to feel more unlimited and see more of that happening for you. Um, but also knowing that we're still learning too. We're still getting better at embodying this. And um, we we just really look forward to the best year yet. Well, I love the word. So, okay, it's that time of year where a lot of us in our lives and our businesses, uh, we are choosing a theme for the year. Lots of us pick a word that we, someone's calling me as we speak. Uh, a lot of us pick a word for the year, right? Like something that was gonna guide us. and. You know, I've been guiding a couple of different groups through that process of picking their words. And it's so interesting how many people pick words that don't go with what they really want. So they're choosing a word based on what they think that they need instead of what they really want. And this is getting me to this word unlimited because I've been I've been analyzing the words and how do they feel and, and all of the stuff that goes into that. And um, it's interesting, right, because you can't think about being unlimited without limited, right? Bless you, Rachel. <laughs> um, and so I've been even thinking about this concept of being unlimited. Like, what does that actually mean? Because um, it, the word itself, right, has limits in it. So being unlimited means like the lack of limits. But what does that really mean? How does that feel in our bodies? to be unlimited. For me, it feels expansive. It feels optimistic. It feels possible. It feels like yes energy. It feels like yes to myself. Um, and that's, anyways, that's just an interesting place to be because I know a lot of us will raise our hands and say, I want to be unlimited, or I know that I am unlimited. And yet we find ourselves arguing for our limitations, right? We almost say like, I know I'm an unlimited being, but. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I mean, that's, I'd love to dive into that. I'd love to talk about that. Um, I actually, no, I'm not even gonna let you talk, Rachel, because I got something that came up for me yesterday and I thought, this is interesting. And it's, it's turned into a conversation on my Facebook feed. I actually posted this in a group that Rachel and I host as well because I was recognizing that less options, quote unquote limits, right? Help me feel free. And boundaries actually help me feel unlimited. Right. And so I want I was like playing with the juxtaposition of that, the weirdness of, gosh, I think I, I say I want freedom. I want to feel totally free. And for so many people, this is the argument on my page right now is like, Carrie, freedom equals options. Right. And yet I find if if I am posed with a do you want this, 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 right? Like that actually doesn't feel very free to me. That feels like that is a lot to manage. That's a lot to consider. That's a when it when I'm faced with more with, with 
do you want this or this? <laughs> um, I feel so much more relaxed and open and free. So anyways, I just thought I'd open the conversation about the feeling of the words that we're talking about, Rachel. So what do you got? I love this conversation. I feel the same way. And to me, it's all about choice. And so, for example, I'm a writer. I love writing poetry and all kinds of other things. But if I have a form of poetry that I'm trying to fit my feelings into, often it's a lot easier for me to write it because there's something I need to go by. I need to fit into this, you know, syllables per line or it needs to rhyme here. You know, like there's a structure to it that I can put my energy into. And I was just talking to a friend yesterday about how right now I I have more projects than I've ever had and it's overwhelming me a little bit and I don't know what to choose to work on at a time because they're equally exciting to me. And so I actually had to write it all down. And when I have the time, I say, what is the most beneficial thing for me to work on right now? And I pick one. So Carrie, I'm right there with you about unlimited isn't necessarily about always having all the options at one time. It's about feeling connected to our own like sense of power and joy and groundedness and freedom and and having the best options available to us from there not necessarily every single option but like the best options for us at that time i love it i love it so much because um and i want to talk about what it means the truth that we are unlimited beings and what that means but i want to use this example that I, I used it yesterday when in, in the live stream, I was talking on my own business page because I remember. So I have a dream of being a lottery winner, right? That has such an amazing feeling in me. And it has been something that since I was a very small child, and people would say like, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And my friends were like, I wanna be a fireman and I wanna be a teacher. And I was like, I wanna be a lottery winner. Like that is just like one of the things on my list of things to do and accomplish and be in this lifetime. And I um, was remembering a commercial for the lottery from several years ago here in California. And it was about, um, you know, basically like, Spend a dollar and you get to dwell in your dream was basically the, what they were selling. This idea of like, you know, it's worth it to spend a dollar for you to dream. But it had a voiceover of someone who had supposedly won the lottery. And he was going through the grocery store with all of the options, right? Everything available to him in the grocery store. And he's like, and I was standing there. And then it hit me. I can totally afford all this cheese. And I was thinking about that, how great it is. This is, a, I think, a perfect analogy. It's so great to know I can have all the cheese, right? Like I can buy everything here in this dairy section and have like a piece in the knowing of that. But if you buy everything in the dairy section, then that feels overwhelming right? Because then you have all this cheese you either have to eat or give away or cook with or like do something with. And I feel like that's a little bit similar to what you've got going on and the strategy that you figured out, Rachel, right? Which is at any moment, I can choose the one thing, right? Because it feels so good to stand in front of all of the cheese and be like, I don't have to look at this versus that and go, which one can I afford or what makes it right? I can have any of it. What do I really want right now? What's the best choice for me right now? And so for me, I think there's, um, how am I describing this? I don't know if I'm doing a good job of describing it. Or yeah, <laughs> no, I totally relate to this, yes. Okay, so there's we actually freedom. have a comment too. I think, I think okay. she gets it. She's saying, yes, absolutely. It takes discipline to be a free spirit. Absolutely, thanks Dolores. Amen, Dolores. Yes, I was thinking about that when, when you were talking about um, freedom in the structure. 
is like lots of people think like the free spirits are so free, um, but it's true, right? We have to have some structure in order to, uh, I don't know, I have to have structure in order to feel truly free. And same with this idea of like unlimited. We know that we're unlimited. We know we can have all the cheese. But having all the cheese at once is overwhelming. It's like what Abraham says about like, you don't want to actually eat all the food you could ever have in your whole life right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm now imagining how I would feel if I ate all that cheese. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you brought up a really good point. And it's something I hear all the time about people who are afraid to go and live intuitively and in alignment. They think they have to give everything up, give up the structure, give up the strategy, give up everything. But really, to have balance, we need both. We need a body and an energy system. Like we need um, water and a cup in order to. Get, I'm not going to lick it off the floor, right? So it's it's not about giving anything up. It's not about just being free and wild it's about knowing that our harmony our true sense of um like belonging and comfort and contentment and excitement is all bound in flow and structure masculine and feminine like we're a balance of these things even the universe, like we have manifestations. There are stars and planets and um, all kinds of like things floating around, physical things in space, but also the great expanse. So I, I'm a very down to earth person in my own way. And also probably the most expansive and uh, free flowing person you'll ever meet. But that really works. And for you, you know, just today even I heard from someone like, I'm afraid to really live in my best feeling because I need certain things to keep getting done. Right? So it's like there's this, like what Carrie was saying, we know we're unlimited beings. We know we're allowed to have everything we want. We know that life can be easy and abundant and fun, but there's a part of us that fears going there because we think our daily needs aren't going to continue to be met or like things will fall through the cracks. And this is probably the biggest leap that people will make is stopping that split energy and realizing that when you align to your best feeling, when you decide to feel good, no matter what, when you decide to honor your truth in your life, regardless of what other people are thinking and saying, you leverage your higher dimensional energy, your higher self, your source self. And Things don't fall through the cracks when you do that. That is handing over a lot of tasks to, let's call it the universe, because that's what a lot of people relate to, but it's handing it over to the bigger part of you. And it's going to get done in an even easier way. So I have lists too. I have to-dos and things I need to accomplish. And, and sometimes... It doesn't happen on my timeline. Sometimes um, something I want to do today doesn't happen until next week. But that's because the energy has been lining itself up. And then when I get to it, it's easy. So there's a new way of kind of expectations, which I know Carrie is going to talk about. There's a new way of things happening in flow, in alignment. And sometimes we need to be okay with the fact that, okay, the energy is not lined up for this thing right now, but I know it's going to get done because I, I have faith in myself and I know that everything I want, everything that needs to happen is going to happen. And so it's just about relaxing into this idea that more is working than just you. 
And that, I think we need to know that we need to be okay with that in order to leverage this idea of unlimited, because we can't do everything. If we're trying to do everything with our actions, we're very limited. But if we're relaxed and open enough to let our higher self, our source self do a lot of the things, that's when we really can see momentum building in a way that we've never seen before. I love what you just said about like we, if we try and do it all, we are limited because when we're talking about the truth of you is that you're unlimited. We're talking about a much bigger you than maybe you're thinking of, right? It's that part of you that is connected to when, when I say like you are an unlimited being and there's something in you that like lights up and opens up and feels the yes of that. That's the unlimited part of you. <laughs> like the personality, the skin suit, <laughs> the you that like we most, you know, we consider ourselves the you that lives in here. Like, of course, that is limited. <laughs> of course it is. Um, and that's sort of like the joy and the fun of this journey of being humans in this lifetime, right? Is the, the interplay between the you and the you, <laughs> right? The all of you, the big self and the small self. Um, I just wanted to say that. I also wanted to tell you, Rachel, you said something that I, it really hit me when you talked about split energy. And you and I have talked about that, right? When energy split and what happens. And in the moment we talked about it, I had a perspective shift. And it's like, well, we could look at it as split energy, right? I've got this going on and that going on. Or, and you talked about it in the same breath as you were talking about being balanced and being whole, right? I could look at it as split energy or I could look at it as part of my integrated whole, right? I am this and that. I am the cup and the water. I love that. I love that so much. Um, there's one more thing. I, oh, it was a story I wanted to tell you because I have a, a friend and client who is going through exactly what you were talking about. She hit a huge milestone in her business last year. And she's looking at this year and she's sensing her own unlimitedness. Like she's knowing I am ready for this exponential growth, right? She hit a big milestone and the next milestone is not necessarily like the next logical step, right? It's not like you grew this much this year. We can expect the same next year. It's like, all right, you got here now stratosphere, right? And so she has a knowing of that, but she came to our call this week and she was like, all right. So I know I can get to this big number. How do I do it? <laughs> like, and I was like, well, okay, I know you can get to that number too, but we're not going to get there with strategy first. We're going to get the strategy and the structure that will come. That is going to come. We are definitely going to need it, right? Your, your business is going to need the structure to support the bigness of what you've got going on. But we can't start there. We have to start with what would feel amazing. What would be so good now that because her issue is like, I don't want to spend another year working really, really hard. That's been her. She's she's learning to work less hard, less hard, less hard. But it was funny how she's hitting a new thing. And she's like, let's just put in the hard work now to figure it out. So that um, anyway, she was totally putting limits on herself before she even started. And so, um, yeah, maybe we can talk about that. Like you need both, but yawning. <sighs> but how do we integrate? How well, do we, go ahead. I feel like everything trickles down from our vibrational state. So it's vibration creates and then it manifests in different levels. It manifests in our thoughts, in our body, in our outside life, and in our you know, emotional state. So all those layers of us, that's created by our vibrational state. When you're in a good mood, you laugh at people who are a little weird. You think the world is you know, great, it's fine. 
when you're in a bad mood, you take offense to things, things get into you and you're much more irritated. And if you drop your dinner, it's a really big deal and it's not something to laugh at. So our vibrational state, how we feel is what creates everything else. So how I run my business is I find the feeling of what I want. How do I want my business to feel? How do I want to feel going into my year, going into my new quarter? Um, I want to feel abundant. I want to feel relaxed. I want to feel like an expansion happening. I want to feel like I have an abundance of time and income and it's all easy. And so that feeling then gives me thoughts or ideas of how to structure that or what I need to do, what actions I need to take in order for that to become my reality. So for example, um, I could plan a product launch or I could plan working on a course, creating something. I've already put some of that into my calendar. I've also put in, I've blocked off two afternoons a week for recreation, for going skiing or going hiking. And so it's the feeling that gives you the inspired ideas, it gives you the inspired actions. And that's really how everything comes about for me, at least. What about you, Carrie? I feel uh, like some stuff going on. I was yawning, <laughs> now I'm coughing. So clearly this um, this conversation is is clearing the way for me to experience my own unlimited nature in a new way. I, um, well, so you talked about how you are actually like a very structured person. And, um, you know, we, we spoke in the beginning of this call how intimate Aileen has told me like, wow, Carrie, you got some really big dreams. And the other side of that was, and wow, Carrie, you've got some pretty big resistance, <laughs> right? And I've spent um, a considerable amount of time moving through that. And I can tell you my life feels really, I see you shifting away from the dots, Rachel. <laughs> um, my life definitely feels different than it. I think Intimate Alien probably told me that like two or three years ago. And my life has expanded so much. And my day to day has become so much more open. And my vibration has gone from here, like to here. Um, and so all of that feels really good. And still growing, still learning, still becoming more expansive, still releasing the limitations on myself. So this year, where this comes into play in terms of how my day to day goes, is I freaking adore a rigid structured schedule. Like I love knowing I wake up every day at this time, I do this, then I do that. I have my daily, like my daily tasks, the things that I hold myself accountable for every day aren't actually business related. They don't even really seem connected to money at all, although they're like a thousand percent connected to money. I hold myself responsible every day to, did I journal? Did I run? Did I meditate? <laughs> did I, I do uh, I have a vision boarding process that I do every day. Like these are practices that keep me in the highest vibration. And then I do have a chunk of time every day that's dedicated to work, right? It is time available in my day for clients, for calls like this, for whatever. So it is, it's like regimented and there's a space in my life where that fits in. And sure, stuff gets put on my calendar several months at a time, but that's how I'm able to find freedom and flow and being unlimited inside of a structure is the structure to me is around making sure that I prioritize the things that keep me in a very high vibration and making sure there's a window of time to do, I don't wanna say other things because there's still things that I don't say yes to clients or projects or people that like bring me down, right? But there's a there's a window of time in my life for quote unquote work. There's the next window of time in my life where I'm spending time with my kids. There's a, like, I live for that kind of structure and it feels very free. 
whenever I go too long, like on vacation or in a break from that structure, I, I feel like my anxiety building up and I, I feel um, my own limitations. But what I wanted to say beforehand is that doesn't come, um, that putting structure, how do I say this? What had stopped me from making money in my business in the past was knowing my unlimited potential and then trying too quickly to put a structure into, like to go from, I'm making $0 in my business, I know I'm capable of making 10 million, how do I structure my $10 million plan right now? Um, and that caused me to just be in constant, crazed, frantic action and feeling incredibly limited. <laughs> so I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, and let's talk about why. And it's because a few things. Probably you were feeling lack and urgency when you decided to enact the structure for the 10 million. And so if you start with the feeling first, you were creating from lack, which then created more lack. And so that's why we're both saying you want to prioritize feeling good, feeling your unlimitedness or whatever you can that's possible for you that feels good. If unlimited doesn't feel good to you, don't do it. Find a place that feels really good to you and then wait for the inspirations to come. Don't try to force something from a place of, I know I should be capable of this, so I'm gonna do it. That doesn't work because you're creating from a feeling that's not good. Um, and I wanted to say, you know, so Carrie has told me that she did less last year than she's ever done in her business. And she also had a personal record for her abundance. And I really just wanted to highlight that because that means that when you do what feels good, all the things get covered, the money, the tasks, the family, all of that gets risen up when you feel good and nothing gets left out. So I haven't asked you this, Carrie, but what was last year like for you? Did you feel like you were just like living on top of a mountain and like, the house was a mess and like nothing got done and the kids ate from the fridge. Like what, how did it feel to you as a whole last year? Yeah. So it's so interesting. I chose for my word for 2020 playful abundance. And I had declared to myself sometime before that. Um, Cause I think 2019 was my year of yes. And so 2020 was all about playful abundance. And I had sort of declared to myself, I'm just gonna show up and be awesome. That is my motto, that is what I'm doing. I'm gonna show up and I'm gonna be awesome. So I basically abandoned try. Like I just got word of any try. I got rid of any try, <laughs> I got rid of any try. I got, I just abandoned wanting to figure it out. I was living in, in faith and trust that if I show up and I'm awesome, and that often meant doing what I'm doing now, which is a minimal amount of preparation, right? Like, what are we talking about today? Okay, let me think about it, right? But mostly, hey, I'm gonna trust that I'm awesome and I'm gonna show up, <laughs> right? So that is what I agreed, my agreement with myself in my business in 2020. And it started off really well, but I do think that ambition and drive, there were some things still like running in the background that were like, hey, I'm gonna show up and be awesome. How am I going to turn this into a million dollars? How am I right? There was a little bit of that going on, and then a couple of things happened. One, my husband had um, kind of a big accident that caused him to be really injured and super dependent on me. So not financially, but like physically dependent on me, and that was more than I could handle given everything else that I was doing. And so luckily for me, about a month into his recovery and subsequent surgeries and like stuff that was going on, the whole entire world shut down just for me, <laughs> just so I could get a freaking break. <laughs> 
And that was actually amazing. And I stopped thinking about playful abundance because truth be told, I was busy taking care of my husband and my kids were home and just readjusting and also feeling exceptionally grateful that for a minute we didn't have, you know, two soccer games and a track meet and a whatever on Saturday. And I wasn't driving to three different schools at three different times, like all the other things. I was just really grateful. And what came out of that, right, was more and more opportunities to show up and be awesome. And it felt, now we were super blessed, right, that neither my husband and I, our businesses, my business, his job, didn't necessarily, like, it, it. we weren't in fear or lack or panic because of the pandemic. We were just in a place of, okay, let's readjust right? Let's, how do we do the same thing a little bit differently? Um, but no, I mean, it, it's, it opened up perfectly. More opportunities came. Turns out more people were looking for what I had. Um, and it, what, it's never, it hasn't been easy. It, how do I say, not that it hasn't been easy. It's never been easier than it was this year. This year was so relaxed. People keep talking about, um, going back to normal. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I don't know. I, I want to go back to some sense of normal, but like, I'm really liking right now. So yeah. And then at the end of the year, I couldn't all year long, I couldn't even remember what was my word for 2020. I can't remember my word for 2020. And then right at the very end, when I was coming up with my word for 2021, I was like, oh, it was playful abundance. Oh my God. This year was so playful, right? After after the February, March, like total shutdown. This year was so playful. It was so fun. And it was more abundant than any other year in my business and in my husband and my personal life as well. His job and his work situation, like it has never been more abundant. And so that actually got me thinking when you and I were having this conversation about expectation. Um, I just read something in a book that says your expectations are more powerful than your desires. And I want to talk about that as we talk about unlimited. But what struck me is hearing my colleagues say, oh, this was my best year in my business. Or that I realized like, oh, it's not funny. Every year is my best year in my business because that's my expectation. I, it hadn't occurred to me that I would have a, a worse year than last year. <laughs> Um, so I found that really interesting. So it was a really long answer to your question, but um, yeah, that's how 2020 went for me. Yeah, I just wanted to share a real story of everything rising at the same time. And that just because you choose to prioritize your feeling good doesn't mean things are going to get left, you know, at the wayside. Um, so yeah, let's talk about expectation because this was like the last thing for me to really grasp and get a hold of when it came to being more conscious and deliberate with my like vibration and my thoughts. I was really into all of this for a very long time, fully knowing that I'm the creator, knowing that my thoughts are important, my feelings are important, and I would still catch myself having these little like expectations, these little visions of the future that weren't positive, like, oh, like this might happen. And what if this happens? And like almost worst case scenarios would run through my mind. They weren't loud. They weren't big, but it took a long time for me to notice that they were there playing like under the surface. And I realized like, well, oh, that's not good. If I'm expecting that or if I'm planning for a contingency, if I'm planning for something bad to happen, that means my focus is on that and not exclusively on what I know can be true, right? Like I am unlimited. Last year, my word was unlimited. So um, a lot of this came up and I'm really grateful that I got the clarity of seeing that I was doing that because I certainly 
I wouldn't have been able to say that before, you know, it, it was like so under the surface. And when that happened to me, I just started like, okay, I don't need to plan for this. I know that I can handle anything that comes up. I would rather put my focus on the positive expectation than on the negative because I want that to happen instead. And I just started re framing the situation, training myself to think differently whenever I would notice that I was expecting negatively. And it really made a huge difference. Like my abundance story is like, it's more of a mindset, more of a vibrational shift for me. I didn't make the most I ever made last year, but vibrationally, like <laughs> I expanded way more. It's, it's just like a feeling. I don't know how to explain it, but in essence, I will now be able to make way more than I've ever made in the past because of these little shifts, these little reframes that I've been able to do. Does that make sense? <laughs> Well, because I know you, I'm like, one, I'm actually, it's surprising for me to hear that you didn't make more than you ever made last year, but I know you will, this year, it will be like, you have made that up level, that shift, like this year will be like 10 times more, right? It's, well, I should it's say that to clarify. So I, I didn't bring in more money than I've ever brought in, but I, what I made that I'm not counting is extending into this year. So technically I sold more, you know what I mean? But yes, <laughs> agreed. Well, and that's the whole point, right? Well, maybe it's not the whole point, but either way, high five to both of us for doing awesome <laughs> and for continuing to raise our um, vibrations and learning about how to expect positively. And I think the thing about expectations, right? We all have big desires. So like my beliefs and my desires are, are, have always been aligned, right? Like I'm gonna use my $10 million example again, right? Like, hey, I believe I'm awesome. I'm smart, I'm capable, I'm rad, people love me. I, I'm capable if, I don't know, if so-and-so can make $10 million, if those YouTubers or that whatever, if they can make $10 million, surely I can, right? So there's a desire, like, yeah, that sounds amazing. And there's a belief, I can totally do that. But the expectations definitely weren't aligned, right? Because my expectations were based on my past experience. And I think this is true for everyone. We base our expectations on past experience. So if you go to a restaurant and every time you go there, you get terrible service, you go there again, you're probably expecting <laughs> not so great service, right? You might even tell the person you go with, you're gonna temper their expectations. You're gonna be like, hey, the food here is amazing and it's totally worth the crappy service, right? So then what do they go in expecting? They go in expecting crappy service. And so our expectations have been um, colored by our the whole our whole life of, um, things that people told us, the way that people treated us, right? Like our expectations come from our past experience. So one thing that has been really important for me in changing my expectations is doing that calibration process that we talk about, right? Is taking like, let's use a business example. Oh, I wanna launch this product and I wanna charge, um, I wanna launch this product and I want to make a million dollars. So then we go to how much do I need to charge and how many do I need to sell to get to the million dollars? And then we go down the rabbit hole of like, what are people really gonna pay? And is it worth it? Or can I get that many people to buy it, right? We go through this whole thing. Um, and what happened for me this year, right, is I just turned my expectation into, I expect that I'm awesome, I expect to show up and be awesome, and I expect the money to show up. That didn't happen because one day I decided that. It happened because of micro decisions. It happened because of the conversation I was having, having with myself. And it happened because I had spent enough time learning and knowing and trusting my intuition because I had some experience with my intuition 
driving me in the right direction that I felt much safer. I had more and more of an expectation of it working out. So I just said a lot. What do you want to pick from it? <laughs> just that it's a process. It's a process of being aware of where your thoughts are and where your feelings are and moving everything up the scale as often as you can in a gentle way, right? It's not about forcing something into a different slot. It's about knowing that you're a loving being. You can expect abundance. You can expect the world to cater to you. You can expect to receive your dreams easily. And knowing that any kind of negative judgment about yourself doesn't even fit into that equation. So, you know, I was talking to someone the other day too who wasn't sure that she really believed she was in charge of how she feels. And this is someone that has shown me great desire and great ability to manifest and true passion. And I just want to address this a little bit and that, you know, everything we talk about, it's up to you to decide if this is your truth or not. And what I said to that person was like, you know, it, the same thing. It's up to you to decide what you're capable of doing and how you work and what your feelings are and all that stuff. Um, but in that statement, I felt some, it's like, if you feel like you're doing this work because the world is telling you to do this work, because this is how to get what you want, this is how to free yourself of the burdens of the world, it's probably not the right approach. It's not the right reason to do this. I feel like the best reason to change how you feel, the best reason to pay attention to your expectations and your vibration and all these things is really because you know you deserve to feel good. There's a deserving to feel good. There's a deserving to feel love. There's an excitement about feeling better, feeling relief, feeling more in control of yourself. And yeah, we talk about money and we talk about food and we talk about all these things because we need these things in this world and they are available to you, but it really just all comes down to you and how you feel about yourself and whether or not you feel that life deserves to be easy for you and gentle and loving. And so I would just say, sit with yourself and feel into, you know, say, I like myself. I really like who I am. I love myself. I'm a loving being. And see how that feels to you. I, I guess start there. I do that too. I always go back to that because when I lose sight of it, it's just about me feeling good. And I think about all the things that are coming to me. I can lose it a little bit. I can wobble a little bit. And so it's always helpful to just go back to me and how I feel and that I deserve to feel good no matter what. So funny, as you were saying that, I'm remembering a time, this was years ago now, but where I, I have a running buddy and she's great. And she will often like, tell me, stop arguing for your limitation, right? Whenever I get into that space where I'm like, I want, but I want this, but, <laughs> um, or I wish this, but that, you know, she's great at being like, stop, stop it. Do you see what you're doing? And actually, Rachel, you are also great at that with me. Um, and I'm great at that for other people, for sure. <laughs> um, but I'm remembering a time when she and I would run together and every time we would leave, she'd be like, oh my gosh, I love you so much. I'll see you later. And I was like, I can't say I love you to a, like a friend. That felt so weird to be able to say I love you to um, a person that I wasn't like in love with, right? A person that wasn't in my realm. And now I think about like how freely that flows from me constantly. <laughs> Like I'm like, I will say that with clients before I get off the phone with them. Like, I love you so much. I'll talk to you later. Like 
Um, anyways, I'm just thinking about that and how that has shifted and changed as I was able to accept the true nature of who I am. But it didn't happen like just one day. This was the same friend actually who I remember one day she said, well, what do you want? And I was like, what? She said, or she said, what do you need? What do you need, Carrie? I was like, I don't understand the question. <laughs> what do you mean? What do I need? I'm too busy like meeting other people's needs. Anyways, the reason I'm saying all of this and I'm about to cough <coughs> is because for me, going back to the truth of me has taken some convincing. It's taken like, am I willing to believe that I'm totally loving? Am I willing to believe? that I'm worthy of whatever I want? Am I willing to believe that I have an unlimited nature? Initial, like, I mean, Rachel and I can talk about it now and speak like, oh, this is so true, you're unlimited. But I remember the time when I was like, am I even willing to believe that? And that's what it took for me was that word willing, like I'm willing to. I kind of feel like I believe it, but I'm willing to. And I think about, as we're talking about training our expectations, I keep thinking about, right? Because I want an expectation of unlimited. I want an expectation of constant expansion, right? That I can dream something up and then I get to, I can dream something up in the, what it would feel like. And then very soon that and that feeling and evidence of that is showing up in my life. That is happening because I've trained my life to be that way. <laughs> um, but I just, I trained myself to expect it. Like, ooh, I just dreamed this up. I can't wait to see how that comes out, right? Like, I've trained myself to do that. And I also train athletes. And I think about the way that I train them into believing what they're capable of, right? Like, I can, I can see six months ahead of time, how fast they're going to run at the end of the season, right? I can look at their stride and know with a fair amount of certainty what they're actually capable of. But getting bridging that gap between what I know for them and what they know for them takes pieces of evidence along the way. And so it is how I do it with athletes, right, is I design workouts, I put little benchmarks, so that I can show them, look, if you can do this, then you can do that. And I just want to say that for, for you and for myself in terms of when we're training our own expectations of being unlimited, of creating miracles, of being able to have whatever we want, right, is it does take going back and looking at the evidence, just like we did in, um, because that, that changes your expectation. I wanted it. I got it. I wanted it, I got it. I asked for it, it showed up this way instead of that way, but wouldn't you know, there it is, right? So I feel like I'm rambling a little bit, but I wanna make sure that I'm, we're making that clear. It is a process and it is a convincing yourself process. <laughs> yes, and I'll add to that, that so you have the feeling you believe you're worthy and deserving. You're feeling good. You're changing your expectations. And then you get ideas, right? Ideas that come from that new place that you can now take action on. And I know for me, a lot of times those ideas aren't what I would have imagined. And that is like the process of what Carrie's saying of like, doing it, seeing it, getting results, convincing yourself that that's the path. That is what I constantly have to do because I get ideas of what to do that are different than what I would have imagined. And they're often like, it's easier. It requires more of my true self. It's more of what I want to do instead of what I think I should do. And that can take a little leap of faith to go forward with. Like when we did the aligned up level, um, that's what I really want to talk about. That is who I am. It is how I live. It is the easiest thing in the world for me to talk about. And 
it was a little bit like, wow, can we really just do that? Like, can we just do this? And it was such a big hit and people are still asking us for more of that content. And so but with everything in my life that I'm doing, it's always in response to a new higher vibration. And for me, it's always a, okay, it can be easier. It can be more satisfying and fulfilling to me. And I need to forget about all of my past limiting beliefs that I need to be a certain way for the world. Like that statement, you can print out, you can slather all over your walls because for me, that's been the entire journey. Okay, so I was feeling like we should at least tell people um, where to go to get more of this, right? Where do you go to get support on your journey of living vibrationally, of coaching yourself um, and being in a group of others coaching themselves and coach and and Rachel and I coaching you to make those incremental steps toward those leaps of faith being like almost not leaps of faith anymore because there's so much faith that it's just a leap. It's just a like, this is where we go next. Um, we do have a group that we want to tell you about. Uh, so I'll let you do the honors, Rachel. Yeah. And I love what you just said though, about like, it's not a leap of faith anymore. It's just a leap. And those leaps are exciting. They're exciting because it's you being more of you in the world and the world responding with like applause and cheers and confetti. It's so thrilling to live this way. Um, so yes, we have a group and um, it's called the multi-dimensional abundance coaching group where this is what we do. We help you live this way by providing you with a community of people who are living this way with courses and um, we do three calls a month with you. Carrie has a dream casting call. I have a coaching call where we're both there and intimate alien also does a Q and a call. So we're like immersing you in this world so that it can become your normal too. And we can help you work out any kinks along the way of limiting beliefs that show up of, okay, oh my God, I'm realizing I have this expectation of disaster. What do I do? So, um, yeah, you can learn more by going to intuitiveart.com slash membership, and maybe we'll see you in there. And do you have a dog now, Rachel? I'm hearing barking. It's just my neighbors. <laughs> oh, I was like, Rachel has cats, but is she dog sitting? I love dogs. I would love to have a dog, but we don't have one right now. So Rachel's neighbor's dog is super excited about you joining us in <laughs> the multi-dimensional abundance coaching group. It is, um, it's really great. I hope you see you there. We have conversations like this all the time um, and are help constantly helping people um, move through what they're, what they're going through and up level and up level and up level and expand and expand and expand into your multi-dimensional abundant unlimited um yeah i feel like that's it for me mic drop i'm out <laughs> i know well i just want to say we've got liz here she says this is so great thank you you're so welcome liz we love you it's good to see you here today yeah i think we said it all um you are worthy of an incredible unlimited life and from our heart to yours Lots of love. <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. Thank you for coming. We really love these chats that we have together. So if you have any comments and you're watching a replay, um, just put it below and we'll get back to you. All right. Awesome. Okay, so Liz, well, we have to show this. So okay. Liz is saying, she, I just joined and I already feel so supported. You two are amazing. She's talking about our coaching group. So Liz is a member. And thanks, Liz. I'm so glad that you're having such a good time. We love you. And we're just so glad that you're in there, too. And I love that picture of, I was going to say something earlier, but it seemed like we were wrapping up. I love the picture. Liz, you look so beautiful in that picture with your streamlined slick hair. <laughs> she always shows up so glamorous. I love it so much. I know. And we should just tell you, Rachel and I are, I was telling her before the call, I'm like, 
I am business up top, pajamas on the bottom. <laughs> Same. You can just assume I'm always wearing sweatpants. Like that's just my norm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and inspired life for you. So, such a beautiful interview. Well, thank you, and thank you for coming. And we'll see you guys really soon. Yeah. All right. Super love. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.